first speaker uh, after Javier's uh, excellent warm up will be uh, Kalyan Ducha, uh, who will be speaking on combining NER and knowledge graphs in the Heritage uh, in the Heritage Connector project. Uh, Kalyan. And I will, uh, for all the speakers, I'll set a 10 minute timer. Uh, we have plenty of time today, but I'll send a 10 minute timer and it will go off after about eight minutes just for a two minute warning. Thanks, Tom, and thanks everyone for inviting me. Um, hopefully I'll be able to fit in as much to my 10 minutes as Javier just did in his five minutes. Um, let me find my slides. Um, can everyone see these okay? Looks good. Amazing, thanks. Um, so yeah, I'm Kalyan, I work with the Science Museum group um, in the UK. At the moment, I'm working on a project called Heritage Connector where we are trying to use the bits about machine learning that Javier was just talking about, turn unstructured data into structured data um, to try and deal with some of the kind of historical cataloging inconsistencies and maybe lack of metadata here and there in um, heritage collections. Um, so for the purpose of this talk, I've distilled our set of research questions into three. I'll tackle the first one um, now and I'll tackle hopefully the other two together in a bit. So our first kind of main research question is how can existing digital tools and methods to be used to build relationships at scale between poorly and inconsistently cataloged digitized collection objects and other content sources. So this is what I was saying before about potentially inconsistent metadata. Um, really isn't suitable for kind of modern websites and modern collections trying to say link to Wikipedia or appear well in Google search results for when people are looking for things. Um, so, and existing digital tools and methods, mainly we, we're talking about NLP and knowledge graphs. Um, so to tackle that, let's look at something from the Science Museum collection. So. This is a so-called spacesuit. This is one that was worn by an astronaut, Helen Sharman, in 1991. Um, you can see from the top of the page that we don't have a lot of metadata on it apart from images. We know its name, that it was made in 1991 and it was made in Russia. Um, when we scroll down a bit, you start to see a bit more of the data we've got on it. Um, and what immediately becomes apparent is there's a really nicely written, pretty lengthy description, um, but there isn't much other, there isn't much metadata. So it would be difficult to kind of take this um, and navigate, um, use it to navigate um, within a collection. So what we can do is use NER. Um, so we can take this description, um, and when we apply NER to it, we get something that looks like this, um, and that's great. So what we've done is look to applying NER to all the descriptions in the museum collection, and we can see we've got Helen Sharman's come out as a person, that's really good. We've got a couple of dates in here. We've got the organization who made the um, space suit. We have a mission, we have the suit itself. Um, and that's that looks useful and that's some metadata, but it still faces the problem of ambiguity that Javier was talking about, that we know there's someone called Helen Sharman, but who is Helen Sharman? Um, so to get where we need to, um, we use an entity linker. Um, so what an entity linker does is takes a mention and the context of the words around it um, and tries to find an entity in a or a record in a knowledge base that it, it matches to. Um, so here you can see that after running NER and entity linking, we've gone from some text and we knew maybe two things about the record to we've got 
four four more things that we know about the record now um that Ego Lider amongst you will realize that three of them are Wicked Air records. Um, the fourth one, Helen Sharman, is um, a Science Museum record. So we're also looking at actually linking these two Wicked Air records, especially where we don't have, so for example, we don't have a record for, um, I'm not going to try and pronounce this, um, or the Soyuz 11 mission um, in the collection. So that's very briefly what we're part of what we're doing um, to try and extract some structure and extra metadata from the collection. Um, by the way, everything we're doing is in open source software and towards the end of the project, it will be wrapped up into hopefully well-functioning open source software with the intention that other museums are able to use it um, or other collections. Um, so we've got this far and we've got some extra metadata. Um, we've gone from a place where there weren't many links between items in the collection. Um, this is all hosted in a knowledge graph um, to where we started to interlink our data within itself, but we've also started to create links to Wikidata, which is great because it allows us to link to other collections that might be on Wikidata, maybe link to the Wikipedia page on the website um, link to um, open data ontologies, um, there's loads of possibilities. Um, so that was the first research question. Um, the next two I'm going to tackle in tandem. Um, so we've got an approach, is it scalable to larger volumes of content and different types of collections? And where is the best use of human input in supporting such an approach? Um, what expert, expertise and skills are required for this. So as I said, we're hoping that we are coming up with methods that can be kind of picked up and used in another museum, another heritage collection. Um, if we look at a common NER corpus, just the English part of it, it's one and a half million words that I don't know how many words are in the Burt corpus, but it's thousands of times more than that. Um, a normal way you might go about improving your NER methods is to label data and add data to the training set. Um, if we're expecting this to be able to be picked up by museums, um, what we actually found in a webinar that we ran in June last year, and the links at the bottom to the recording, um, was 59% of respondents from cultural heritage institutions said that they didn't really have the time, resources, or work required to, in effect, go and label that data. Um, so what we've done is kind of turn the what is the best use of human input question into how can we quickly take human expertise or expertise from the collections and integrate it into an NER model. Um, so one way is rules. Um, We've written some rules within a within a Python library. Um, these are also kind of these are one meant for museum collections and two meant as kind of examples, so people can write their own rules if they want to. Um, we wrote one for common date formats, um, including some extra ones for say second to first centuries BC, etc. Those got our accuracy up one and a half percent on a test set made from the collection. Um, we also noticed that collection names um, such as Forza Collection or Charles Urban Archive weren't performing, weren't being picked up so well. So again, write a rule. Um, and it's been, is that my eight minute? Two minutes left. Cool. Um, so yeah, we've just, and that, that's been a pretty effective approach for us. And we hope to continue building on these rules as we kind of explore more data. The VNA data is being imported into the Heritage Connector as we speak. Um, the other approach which we found is really good for applying NER to museum records is what if we use the collection as a dictionary? So what if we actually take the labels of um, each record in our collection and after we've run NER, um, we actually just go and try and match those labels. Um, and we have types for them already, right? 
Um, we found that that was really effective um, and we use Spacey, the NLP library. It makes it really, really fast to do on big data. Um, it got our accuracy up another 3.2%. Um, as part of the software we're publishing, we're making this process really easy to do. Um, such that everything I just talked about fits in this code. Um, and yeah, we will be publishing the code and documentation and everything. Um, and that is me. We're still learning. We're eight months for an 18 month project. So please send me an email or um, send me a message on Twitter if you want to chat about what we're doing, um, you have any suggestions or questions or anything. Um, thank you. Talian, thank you. That was great. Um, there are uh, two, there are so many questions that there are in fact two blocks in the notes if you want to look down um, and see them. And I think um, we'll continue on with the full set of lightning talks and have time for discussion across all three plus Javier's discussion or a presentation at the end.